am honored to welcome all of you to the session's second session of the day on the track civil engineering. So without any further delay, I would like to invite our speaker, Dr. Hari Krishnan M. So uh, currently serving as assistant professor in civil engineering, Department of Civil Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Calicut. He has completed his B.Tech in civil engineering from Government College of Engineering, Shivanjam, M. E. Naubin Engineering from College of Engineering, Guwahati, Anna University, and finally his PhD in Transportation Engineering from Indian Institute of Technology, Ronki. So, sir, please, this is indeed our pleasure to have you here. On behalf of IEEE MSS Coordinate, we welcome you to this session. Sir, please. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I thank IEEE Malabar subsection for inviting me to talk to you on uh, this program on Roadmap to Success. I'll be talking to you on civil engineering. I hope I'm audible to you and you're able to see my screen. Yes, sir. It's audible. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would start off my discussion with a talk, with a quote uh, by Rudyard Kipling, which says, I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. This is a story from a story called Elephant Style in the Just So Stories of Ray Dad Kipling. In my presentation, I'll try to address some of these questions related to civil engineering. Now, uh, civil engineering is a profession wherein we build in short. And what we built and how we do it is what I'll be discussing in the subsequent slides. Now, this is a, a paper photographs which were taken from uh, our own state uh, in, uh, unfortunately, in three uh, consecutive years in 2018, 2019, unfortunately, uh, uh, or uh, not much in 2020, we have had the floods which has ravaged our state. We have had uh, buildings being uh, uh, damaged to a great extent, bridges having washed away, roads inundated, infrastructures spoiled, and with a worse economic fallout. And we have had uh, lots of catastrophes uh, coming into our state. So the Kerala floods in 2018 were supposed to be the worst in a century. Uh, around 80,000 kilometers of roads were damaged, 39 bridges were damaged. The estimated cost of rebuilding is around 200 billion Indian rupees, and around 50,000 houses were washed away. Catastrophes are not uh, 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 alien to in Kerala alone. We have had it all over the country. We had the cyclone Fani, which happened in 2019 in Odisha, uh, where there were lots of uh, infrastructure damages. Uh, there was power and water supply scarcities, snapping of power lines and communication lines, which uh, required massive restoration works. All over the world, in Italy, we had earthquakes uh, which left 700 homeless. We have had, uh, so the alumnus from an engineering college, six of them were called upon for rehabilitation by the government. They were mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, chemical engineers, computer science engineers, and of course, civil engineers. And uh, Civil engineers said, of course, you can help you because civil engineers build houses, schools, roads, bridges, electrical transmission lines, and so on. So basically, civil engineering is all about buildings. Now, it's a profession which has existed since the time of civilization. We have had the great pyramids of the Egypt and the Mesopotamia, the Great Wall of China. We have had the Parthenon in Greece, the Apian Way, which is nothing but the roads leading to the adage that all roads lead to Rome. In fact, this particular picture was an Apian way in, from, in Italy, which was named after Apius Claudius Secus. So we have had lots of infrastructure. So civil engineering is therefore can be defined as a professional engineering discipline, which deals with the design, construction and maintenance of the physical and the naturally built environment. 
So what exactly is a physical and naturally built environment is something which I'll discuss in the subsequent slides. So basically, it is a professional engineering discipline which deals with the design of uh, infrastructure, construction, and of course, the maintenance part. Now, if you move further, there are various disciplines in civil engineering. These are some of the sub-disciplines. I'll go into each of these in detail. So we have structural engineering, construction engineering and technology, geotechnical engineering, environmental engineering, water resources engineering, transportation engineering, surveying, and so on and so forth. Now, all these become courses in the engineering curriculum. And it is possible for you to specialize in each of these sub-disciplines for your postgraduate degrees and perhaps for your research. Now, so what will you study in a BTEC civil engineering program? So essentially, the one of the subjects that you would study would be mechanics of solids, mechanics of fluids, wherein which you require some intuitive knowledge on calculus, mathematics basically, integral calculus and differential calculus, and of course, on laws of motion. We'll be leading, we'll be talking about materials that we normally use for construction uh, practice and also the drawings associated with it. So since we use a lots of materials for construction, we need to check for the strength of these materials and the suitability of these materials for construction. So we have a materials testing lab, which comes a part of our lab programs. We have a structural engineering lab where we build prototype of buildings and test them, subject them to loads to see their failure patterns. And so that the design uh, processes can be suitably altered so that they don't fail. And of course, we make drawings. So we have a drawing lab and uh, which we basically we use AutoCAD for, work for your drawings. So we have mechanics of solids and mechanics of fluids. And we have building technology, which are primarily subjects that are taught in the third semester of the BTEC degree program in civil engineering. And then we have hydrology and water resources, where we talk about flows in irrigation channels. We talk about dams. We talk about dam break analysis. We under, try to understand floods and how the floods impact uh, the, the maximum level of floods. We also try to take measurements on Earth because most of the infrastructure are based on Earth. Therefore, we need to do a survey, the prerequisite of which is good grounding in mathematics, of course. And then you have a surveying lab wherein we use GPS, so not very sophisticated GPS instruments and uh, equipments like the total station. Uh, and of course, we have fluid mechanics lab, which, hel which helps us to study the flow through channels. So these are the another two of the specializations, hydrology and water resources, and of course, geomatics. And then we talk about the geotechnical engineering, wherein we talk about soil. We study how the soil behaves under load. We talk about slope stability and slope stabilization. So in the recent uh, aftermath of the uh, hill slides, which have been ravaging the state, uh, geotechnical engineers have lots of scope. And we design the foundations for the building. So you require pre prerequisites of mathematics, physics, and some amount of statistics. We have transportation engineering, where we talk about the design of highways, junctions, flyovers. We design the airways, the rail, railways, and also we do traffic studies to uh, reduce the impact of congestion on the road network. So we have materials to be studied with respect to soil conditions. So we have the soil mechanics lab and we have the transportation engineering lab where we talk about the pavement materials, materials with which we make the roads and also the airfields. Uh, we, talk, we, we, we also discuss a bit on the uh, mass arrest systems that are normally used in airports. Okay, now uh, we also study about construction management where we talk about project monitoring, we talk about estimation and costing. Essentially, this deals with the management of materials, management of labor, management of cost, because we have huge construction projects going on, and delay is a major issue. We have environmental engineering, which, where we talk about water quality. We talk about both uh, portable water, that is drinkable water, and wastewater, which comes, the treatment processes, and so on. And then we have the structural analysis and design, where we, we analyze the response of structures to loads. The loads could be the loads of people walking in, the loads of machinery, the loads of wind, loads of earthquake. And we, we try to see how we can design so that the buildings are safe, they are structurally safe. So the concept of serviceability, which means it's able to do its intended uh, purpose for a long periods of time in a safe manner needs to be designed. So we talk about the design of, for safety and the design for serviceability. So associated with these aspects, we have the environmental engineering lab where we 
we will study about the water quality parameters. We talk about how the wastewater treatment methods can be done. We talk about durability of structures in the durability and the non-destructive testing method lab. And of course, we have the ocean engineering lab where we talk about how uh, structures in the ocean, like for example, your uh, oil rigs and the platforms that you built offshore can be, need to be designed. So the prerequisites include some studies on loss of motion and of course, chemistry. Now, when, do we get, when can we take up this engineering profession? So after your standard 12, there is an option for you to pursue your undergraduate program. If you want to specialize for a postgraduate program, you can do, you can do that. And you can even go on for your research program leading to a doctor philosophy degree. Now, uh, students after the diploma programs can also join the second year of the BTEC degree program through the lateral entry. This is one option that is available uh, for students in Kerala. Now, how to get admissions? Of course, you have the J, you have the IITs, the premier technical institutions in the country, wherein you need to qualify the JE main, which is conducted by the National Testing Agency, followed by JE Advanced, which is conducted by the IIT. NITs, uh, the scores in JE main is normally taken. You have the state run, government run engineering colleges. Uh, in Kerala, we have the Keem Entrance Examination, which is conducted by the Commission of Entrance Examinations. And of course, private engineering colleges, which might have entrance tests or counseling. So these are some of the ways in which you can, can get an admission. Now, where to study civil engineering? Civil engineering program is offered in most of, or rather all the technical, premier technical institutions in the country. It's offered in IITs, NITs, almost all the state government engineering colleges and of course, lesser number in private engineering colleges. Now, why civil engineering? Essentially, civil engineering is a profession which really helps you to make a difference to your fellow citizens. So you want to help pedestrian who want to safely cross the road. You can construct a walk over bridge so that he can move safely. We can design a road tree junction so that it helps reduce the congestion. You can design a signal so that vehicles don't have to wait for long uh, you know, uh, in the traffic jam. You construct a dam to protect, to protect the flood waters uh, in a river. We can design a water purification plant in, so that it gives drinkable water to the fellow citizens. These are some of the aspects which I've discussed. There are a lot many more. Um, civil, if civil engineering, as uh, Professor Feroz was telling, uh, in architecture, ex experience is always an asset and age is always an advantage. So we tend to earn more compared to other engineers when we age rather than the beginning. So uh, unlike other uh, engineering professions, uh, the honorarium that you get in the initial stages of the career are relatively lesser. It's the second oldest branch of engineering. It's a very challenging field because there are lots of unknowns, unknowns in terms of loads, un unknowns in terms of usage. So here in the picture, you see you have a metro rail that is coming up. So the design of the metro systems, the overhead, the pillars, the overhead, uh, you know, the, the girders, to, to which route the particular uh, uh, the metro has to be aligned, the positioning of the pillars, uh, all that is, again, the job of a civil engineer. And of course, you can have elementary uh, house construction that we see here. So Firoz has rightly said that civil engineers transform what is there in the drawing sheet uh, to uh, structures. Now, there are lots of risks that are involved in the civil engineering profession because you know the loads tend to vary. Uh, very versatile range of positions you can have in your career. It's very competitive because every structure is a unique structure. The, the photographs that you see are in fact what the results of what an architecture, architecture does on paper, while when it has been put up actually in the field is what the civil engineer does. So it's quite competitive and a good synergy between a civil engineering and an architecture uh, architect is extremely important for the success of a construction project. Now, what after BTEC in civil engineering? I'll just give you a brief idea about the jobs options. If you come to core jobs in the core sector, you have the public sector, you have the Indian Engineering Service, uh, which is uh, an examination that is conducted by UPSC which gives you a placement at the assistant executive engineer level to the central PWD, the central water engineering service, the Indian railway service, military engineering services, server of India service, etc. These are some of the, you know, uh, central government institutions where you have a chance if you qualify their examination. You have various public sector industries like the Indian Oil Corporation, the BHAL, the National Hydropower Corporation, Power Grid Corporation of India, National Highway Authority of India, NTTC, and so on and so forth. 
we have other government undertake uh, government undertakings like the indian railways the airport authority of india the nuclear power corporation of india the hindustan petroleum uh, we have bark baba atomic research center the ircon which is another uh, 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 undertaking the rights the rail vikas nigam which are all central government undertakings and of course we have the state government undertakings in kerala we have the state public works department the water authority electricity board housing board soil, soil conservation department department of town and country planning all that employ civil engineers in the private sector we have lot many construction firms the lasan and tubro the lasan and tubro construction you have the sr group the gvk the gmr shepurji palonchi gamon punchloid and so on and so forth the tata consulting engineers a large number of consulting engineering firms you can even start your own firm with a licensed engineer certification so you are your own boss and in fact you have many of the civil engineering students sometimes they start their own firms but you require lot many people to people skills to do that higher studies is another option of course abroad you have master of science in stanford berkeley purdue georgia tech nus uh michigan state university and so on and so forth foreign universities abroad institutions in india where you can pursue the master of technology or master of science in iis indian institute of science or the iits like iit madras iit delhi iit bombay iit kanpur iit roorkee and of course we have our own iit in kerala iit palakkad you have you can pursue your mtech in nits also nit calicut nit trichy nit roorkela warangal suratkal uh nagpur and so on and so forth and also you can have master of technology program in private institutions like vit srm and so on there is also a, a pg diploma in construction engineering and management that is offered by nicma which is national institute of construction management and research this is also another uh, private institute where you can do a pg diploma in construction engineering and management it's also possible for you to do different services like military engineering service or border roads organization uh cartographic surveys that is essentially relating to surveying you can go for naval architect in fact the, the edu mala naval academy uh, takes uh, graduates in civil engineers uh, another uh, lesser known area is law and arbitration where uh, in case when you have a dispute between an employer and an engineer or a contractor in a construction project there is always a need for a negotiated amicable settlement so uh, the doc profile in fact for of your uh, engineers would be a scrutiny of the contract documents understanding the nature of disputes and attending arbitration hearings and you know take membership in arbitration association those institution so these are some this is an in fact lesser known area as far as civil engineering is concerned now you have very world famous civil engineers benjamin wright was a civil engineer vishweshwaraya in our country and of course uh, the, the dr e shridharan uh, the pioneer of uh, uh, civil engineer in india Uh, who is closely was closely associated with the konkan railway uh, the bridge uh, from uh, uh, to rameshwaram and of course your kochi metro now if you want to become a good civil engineer you need to have your knowledge and interest in three fundamental areas mathematics physics and chemistry number two you should be very sensitive to societal needs and you should have the need to better the life of the people around now civil engineers do not work in isolation you might have to work in groups so you require some amount of com good communication skills you also require some amount of man management to happen if you have a good observation power you have a good analytical mind in fact in other words you have a real engineering sense perhaps civil engineering could be a best option okay <coughs> thank you very much i have come to the end of my presentation Uh, thank you sir we have already some questions from participants so one of the question is is civil engineering more in the field work than office work ah uh, in fact it depends upon the type of job that you do in fact there are some civil engineers who just work on the ground for example if you are a site engineer your work would be in the site but uh, in the design field when you go uh, for example you get to work in say a tata consulting engineer as a design engineer your office work is takes up a major part but you might have to have discussions a site visit to know what is actually going on in the site so a good civil engineer is a person who visits both the site and the design office a good design a good design engineer needs to have a look at the site what is going on what are the uh, limitations in the site based on which he can do his design so it involves both but if you are a site engineer per se 
then perhaps it could be restricted only to the site. But if you get it into an office, perhaps you have both. A lesser visits to the site and more work in office. Uh, sir, can you say more about opportunity of civil engineers in defense field? Uh, defense, uh, of course, you have the defense services uh, being made as an offer. Uh, I think in one of my slides, uh, I had uh, talked about defense engineering services. I'll just come to that slide. Yeah, you have, uh, is that, uh, are you able to see this? No, sir. It's no, one minute. Okay, one minute. Is it, uh, are you able to see this now? Yes, sir, it's okay now. So civil engineers have options in combat engineering regiments uh, because in military engineering service, say for example, uh, you must have seen, you know, uh, during a flash flood, the military takes over and constructs, you know, bridges, temporary bridges, not permanent bridges, temporary bridges. You have the border roads organization, which are basically, uh, was built in fact, uh, under the ages of uh, 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 Mr. B.K. Krishnamenon who was a, a defense minister during the Jawaharlal Nehru's time, who started Border Road Organization, which are essentially, uh, it's an organization that is meant for, um, you know, safety uh, of uh, roads and the borders and how to connect, uh, you know, roads and the borders so that uh, you can have more approach of uh, military personnel there from the safety perspective. You have naval, naval, naval projects. So you have a harbor dock, dock engineering. Uh, where people get uh, jobs. Naval architecture is another place. In fact, some of our students have also become naval architects after doing their training at the Ajumala Naval Academy. And you have uh, cartographic duties like Survey of India and so on. So defense is also an option that you can go for uh, after your uh, uh, BTEC in civil engineering. Uh, sir, beyond yeah. construction sector, what are the other sectors can civil engineer work? Um, you see, construction sector is a very large field. Uh, all the major infrastructure, so maybe, for example, you have the Golden Quadrilateral Project, which links roads between different places in the country. You have the Namami Gange Project, which talks about construction of water treatment plants so that, uh, you know, the water in the Ganges is less polluted. You have uh, the National Power Grid Corporation of India, which is involved in making uh, transmission lines to connect, to give electricity to less uh, to uh, areas which are less inhabited. So uh, you have uh, new airports coming up. Uh, you have uh, new buildings in terms of, for example, your uh, central uh, vista uh, of the new parliament building. It's a major infrastructure project. So the design would be done by an architect, as Firoz was telling, but the actual construction would have to be done by a civil engineer. So construction is any, any construction that you take. It's a civil engineer's job to get it actually done, to give a physical feel to that, to transfer from the drawings, from the 3D models that architects make to full-fledged structures. So any infrastructure that you take, roads, buildings, airports, railways, waterways, you know, docks, harbors, William Harbor, Anything that you take, civil engineers have a say. It's impossible to build major infrastructure without civil engineering. Thank you, sir. We have uh, one more question. Uh, yeah. How is the job perspective abroad for civil engineers? Uh, the job perspective abroad, civil engineers have, uh, uh, see, this is a cyclic phenomenon. Okay. Uh, there are job opportunities in the United Arab Emirates, UAE, there used to be, now that uh, now the trend is a bit low. Uh, you know that civil, the, the jobs in civil engineering profession is very much linked to the economy. If there is a boom in the economy, there is money pumped in the infrastructure sector and architects and civil engineers have more work. On the other hand, once the economy slides down, the job opportunities, job opportunities become less. This is a cyclic phenomenon. It happens every five years, 10 years. Okay. But once you, you know, you overcome that particular period of less jobs, jobs are again in plenty. I know personally that in, from civil engineering, we have around 150 students who graduate every year. I do not know even of one person who's sitting idle at home. Of course, if you're really choosy about something that you want to do, you might have to sit at home. But if you're willing to take up a job, get the required experience, I'm very sure you'd be getting a job. 
it could be a low paid job in the beginning as a site engineer but i'm very sure that you would come up it pays experience is an asset experience pays so at the present point of time even abroad in the us the jobs are sliding there is no doubt about it in the present but this might not be the scenario after a year so by the time the present students graduate after four years you never know the world could be a much much better place with lots of infrastructure in place yeah thank you sir uh, due to time constraint we are moving to the next session all the unanswered questions will be answered during the panel discussion on sunday uh, over to you divika so thank you sir that would be end of the second session thank you sir for the for gracing your important work and sharing your thoughts and opinions with us today thank you, thank you so much, much. Thank you for your wonderful knowledge and insight sharing with our youth on the session. Thank you, sir.